Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We want to welcome you. It is Wednesday, 7.30. It's time for our MidConnect Bible study, and that's exactly what we're going to do this evening. We're going to connect not only with one another, we're going to connect with God's Word. That's right. I am so thankful for the Word of God. You know, the Bible tells us that heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God will remain forever. Amen. And in an ever-changing life that you and I live in, it is so important for us to grab a hold of something that does not change, and that is the Word of Almighty God. Yes. Amen? Yes. We started something last week. We talked about um, Ephesians chapter 1. We mm -hmm. got in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is an incredible book. And we talked about chapter 1. Mm -hmm. We want to go to Ephesians chapter 2 this evening. So if you have your Bibles, iPad, whatever you mm -hmm. use, digital device, let's get in God's Word this evening. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 1. And the Word of the Lord says, And you He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important for us to understand that you and I, before we came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we were dead in our trespasses and sin. That's right. Because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden, the Bible says, for there is none righteous, no, not one, for mm -hmm. all have sinned and come short okay. of the glory of God. Listen to this. Man does not merely need a guide or a teacher. He is spiritually and morally dead mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. needs someone that is able to resurrect his spirit and transform, Crystal, his moral essence. Yes. So not only are we, are we dead uh, because of the trespasses and sin, but morally we're dead. Mm -hmm. And we needed someone that would resurrect us, someone that would bring new life to us. That's right. And only Jesus could do that. That's right. So that's shouting right there. And you he made alive. He hasn't called you to be dead. He's, he's called you to be made alive Amen. in Christ Jesus. That's right. And then verse 2 says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Now notice what he says. You've been called out, made alive. But what have we been called out from? Well, you and I have been called out from no longer walking the course of this world. That's right. According to the prince and power of the air. Now we know that the prince and the power of the air is referring to Satan. So before we accepted Christ, before we came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you and I walked in a world that our flesh dictated what we were going to do. Exactly. And it was, it was our flesh that led us. It was our flesh mm -hmm. that, that we made choices based on what our flesh desired and what our flesh wanted. Mm -hmm. And we were controlled as a puppet by the hand of Satan himself. That's right. Who is the prince of the air. Who is the prince of the air. Mm -hmm. And he goes on, who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, mm -hmm. fulfilling the desires of the flesh, there we go, Right. and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. So he said, listen, when you and I walked, before we met the Lord Jesus Christ, when you and I walked according to the course of this world, mm -hmm. we walked in outer darkness. Right. We walked um, with really no righteousness, no direction. Mm -hmm. But the moment we accepted Jesus Christ, now we became righteous. Right. That's why we often say, I was once blinded and now I can see. Yes. Because when we are birthed, reborn again, he gives us a new light on life. Our vision changes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because the mood and manner of society is shaped by the prince and the power of the air. That's right. Well, Whatever I mean, feels good, do it. Exactly. And they're always led by their fleshly, the lust of their flesh, fulfilling right. the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And of course, we know, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, that in these last days, perilous times will come. That's right. And then he gives us a list of what all is taking place. And we're seeing Bible prophecy jump off the pages oh, yes, in the world that we're living in today. Mm -hmm. 
And so, but he said, listen, you, he's made alive. Amen. You're no longer living according to your flesh, but now you're living according to your spirit. Mm -hmm. He says, he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Right. We have not been redeemed with corruptible mm -mm. things such as silver and gold, but that we've been redeemed by the precious blood of of Jesus. Amen. We've Priceless. been redeemed. So we're no longer um, being led by the desires of our flesh. No. Because we shouldn't be. <laughs> we shouldn't be. Because only the things of the Spirit knows the things of the Spirit. That's right. Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. And so we have this flesh that's wanting to take us one way mm -hmm. according to the course of this world, according to the course of this culture. Right. And, and that's determined and directed by Satan. Mm -hmm. But then the spirit is wanting to go another way. Mm -hmm. They're contrary, the Bible says, one with another. That's right. And so we have to be spirit-led mm -hmm. in order to receive all that God has for us, to fulfill the destiny and the purpose that God has for our, for our life. Mm -hmm. We've got to be spirit-led. That's right. And so I love that. You He's made alive. Amen. No longer bound by the lust of our flesh. Mm -hmm. No longer bound by the desires of our flesh. But now we have a brand new mind. Amen. A brand new heart. That's right. Be not, trans be, be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to the course of this world. That's right. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, mind. that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God. Yes. Verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord. <laughs> because of his great love with which he loved us. Yes. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. saved. Amen. Now think about that for, more, for a moment. In the, in the midst of our trespasses and sin. Right, right. All God, the ugliness. All the ugliness of our life. Mm -hmm. God's love was still there. That's right. For God loved us so much that he sent his son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That's right. Into this world mm -hmm. to save sinners like you and me. That's right. I mean, how awesome that is. No greater love than When it this. talks about <laughs> his grace, now notice this, who is rich in mercy. Mm -hmm. We deserve to receive the guilty sentence right. because of our sin. Mm -hmm. We deserve to walk around in condemnation. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus paid the price, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Right. So no longer are we walking around in guilt. Why? Because mercy stepped in. Amen. Mercy, mercy said, listen, the things that, that you truly deserved, it's not going to happen to you because mercy stepped in. That's right. And then he says... His great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Mm -hmm. now, 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 now think about that for a moment. By grace you've been saved. Mm -hmm. And raised us up, verse number six, mm -hmm. together. And made us set together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we're no longer positioned in a world that we're being led by our own fleshly desires. Mm -hmm. But the moment we accept Christ, we take a brand new position, a higher position. Mm -hmm. So the things that once used to be o over our head is now under our feet. That's right. Because now we sit in heavenly places mm -hmm. with Christ Jesus. That's right. That's right. Our position has been changed. Amen. Well, because now we're king's kids. Yes. We're yes. not... We're not just, as the Bible says, and you always get onto me for my King James lingo, but we're not vagabonds. We're not just out there. We're, we're not common folk anymore. That's right. We are king's kids. Royalty. Royalty. Positioned in a higher authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what seems to be coming against us should be underneath us. That's right. Because we are victorious in Christ Jesus. That's right. He's raised us up together. That's right. I'm so thankful that he's raised us up together. David said it this way, that he took me out of the miry, miry clay, clay and set my feet upon a solid rock. He, he repositioned me. That's right. That which used to overcome and overtake me. And he said, no, no, no. Now I've repositioned you to a kingdom seat. That's right. 
you are in seated in heavenly, heavenly places, places that you are the head and not the tail Amen. you once were the tail being led by the prince and the power of the air mm -hmm. when you were led by your flesh of desires but the moment you accepted jesus christ Amen. the transformation took place on the inside of us Thank you, jesus. our sins were washed away as if it never happened we are now redeemed, and now we sit in heavenly places. Amen. Man, that's good stuff. It's really good that's, stuff. That is good stuff. Don't ever let the enemy, you said, you know, that our sins are to never be remembered. That's, a, that's the blessing of the Lord. Mm. But the devil will try to remind you and oh, keep that in most front definitely. of you. But you've been forgiven. That's right. And you need to remind him. That's if right. If my heavenly father doesn't remember it, then you need to silence him Correct. and say it's under the blood of Jesus and you do not need to dwell on it. Do not, because it will bring you back down and you've been forgiven. And once you've been forgiven, stand on that and, and let the enemy know it doesn't matter what my past was because it's been washed and yes. never to be remembered. That's right. So do not allow the enemy to keep that that's so good. You know, that's why our windshield, the front windshield, is bigger than the rear room here. That's right. You know, you got to look yet, forward. You got to move forward. <laughs> Paul said, I press towards the mark of the high prize of Christ Jesus. Right. I'm pressing forward. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, He that puts his hand to the plow and looks back it's not is fit. not fit for the kingdom of God. You can't look back, child of God. You've got to move forward and realize that you are seated in heavenly places. That's right. That the authority of Almighty God resides on the inside of you. That the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask or even think according to the power that works within you. Amen. That, that's good shouting right there. Yes, it is. Verse 7 says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. The exceeding riches that's right. of his grace. Right. Just... Unlimited. That's right. Unlimited. Right. Never running out. Right. More in abundance. That's right. Not just an abundant life, but more abundantly. That's right. And then he says in verse eight, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of your and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We're saved by the grace of God. Now, mm -hmm. grace describes the undeserved kindness by which salvation is given. But notice this, Crystal. It is also the power word describing the Holy Spirit's operational means. Mm. Grace, I want you to write this down. Grace is a force as well as a favor. Mm, I like that. A verb as well as a noun. Mm -hmm. So grace is not only a verb, it's also a noun. Mm -hmm. Grace has a face. And it's the face of Jesus. Amen. That's right. So we're saved. For by grace you've been saved through faith and not of yourselves. Mm -hmm. It is the gift of God. Not of works, least anyone should boast. So it's not of our works. It's the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't give us the license to sin. No. It's really, it's the opposite. You when shouldn't we, really have the desire No, because remember sin. when we lived according to the course of this world, we were led by our own fleshly lust and desires. Mm -hmm. But the moment we realize the price Jesus paid for us. Right. And the moment we fall into a relationship and in love with Jesus and he becomes the Lord and Savior of our life, mm -hmm. now we have revelation that we're not going to want to sin. That's right. Because there's something so great that God has for us. Because we're seated in heavenly places, mm -hmm. we're not stooping down and going back down to the old lifestyle no. we once lived. Mm -mm. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Mm -mm. But, but no. But Christ, Christ lives within me. I'm a changed man That's from the right. inside out. Right. Well, he You're also, a he, Paul also says that the things I once loved, meaning when I was not saved and following in the ways of Christ, those things I no longer want That's because right. I'm now a new creation in Christ. So the things now of Christ I should be desiring. That's right. You know, and, and it's natural. Yeah. It happens naturally. naturally. You don't have to go to a class. You don't have to mm -mm. go to a class seven steps to, to leave your old life. That's right. When there's a true transformation that the Holy Spirit and the grace of God does on the inside of your life, there's a hunger that comes in your life. You'll never be the same in Jesus' name. That's right. Never, That's right. ever, ever be the same. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, thirst. for righteousness, for they shall, shall be, be filled. filled. It happens automatically. Mm -hmm. It's the transformation of power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, for the message of the gospel to those who are perishing is, 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 is not good. Right. But to us who's being saved, it is the power of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. He goes on and said, for we are his workmanship, verse 10, Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Right. So God has nothing but good works for us. Amen. That word workmanship, it talks about or it signifies a poem. Mm. So really what he's saying is before conversion, our lives had no rhythm or reason. Oh, wow. Because, you know, a poem yeah, there's, there's rhythm. Mm -hmm. There's reason. Conversion brought us balance, symmetry, and order. Yes. So we are God's poem, his own artwork. Wow. Think about I that like for a that. moment. Like for that. the purpose of good works. Mm -hmm. Come on, your best is still ahead. That's right. If you're not six feet under, God's, took, God's got greater things for you in That's Jesus' right. name. That's right. You're his artwork. You're his poem. Now you have symmetry. Now you have rhythm. And things happen in your life. The Holy Spirit is the oil, the oil of God that makes things begin to be smooth in your life That's and begin right. to click in your life. And the things that you once struggle with now, that God's be able to anoint you to be able to do greater things for him. Why? Because that's just how it works. Amen. He's Amen. a good God. <laughs> Verse number 11, Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. Now we understand that Gentiles is anyone else but the Jewish people. Correct. So what he was letting them know is saying, listen, remember that you were once Gentiles in the flesh, and because of your uncircumcision, you belonged to, to none of the covenants of promise. Right. Because we understand that the covenants belong to the, to the Jewish people in the Old Testament right. through, this, through the act of circumcision. Mm -hmm. But he said, remember, you, you were aliens. You were, you were not with the commonwealth of Israel. Right. You had no hope. And, and, but now, verse 13, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. That's right. So he's reminding them and saying, listen, you were not part of the covenant of promise right? because of who you were. right? You were a Gentile, uncircumcised. But Christ brought the division wall down. That's right. See, with Christ, you can't have racism. Nope. With Christ, you can't have any division. Mm -hmm. Christ brings unity. Yes. And he brought the wall down so the Gentile could receive the covenant promise through the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. So now that which was far off could be brought near mm -hmm. by the blood of Christ. When Jesus gave up his spirit and he died, the Bible said that the veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom, mm -hmm. signifying no longer do we have to send the priest in, but now we have free access into the very throne room of God amen. that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in the time, time of, of need. need. And so he brought us near by the blood of of Jesus. Man, yes. I'm, I'm so thankful for that. Amen. Me too. Verse 14, we're starting to talk about Christ, our peace, for he himself is our peace. Yes. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. And it's talked about that. Yep. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man mm -hmm. from the two, thus making peace. Mm -hmm. Now, the essence of peace is, is, is dual. To cause a ceasing from separation as well as a ceasing from strife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So peace means to be united with as well as to bring an end to hostility. Yes. So not only is peace uniting me with Christ and re we're united with Christ as believers, but also it brings an end to the hostility. Mm -hmm. The battle's not mine, but it's the Lord's. That's right. It Amen. brings an end to the hostility. He said, the peace that I give you, John talked about, he says, listen, the peace that I leave with you, my peace, Jesus speaking, I give unto you. Right. 
So it's the peace that Jesus, his own peace that he gives to every child, to every believer. And remember, we're seated in heavenly places. That's right. That's right. He says in verse 16, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Amen. Thank God Amen. the gospel's for all. Amen. He came preaching it. And through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. That's right. I love that. Yes. We have access to the Father through Christ Jesus. There is no other way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Jesus emphatically stated within his word, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Amen. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Amen. And so it says, for, um, for through him, mm -hmm. we both have access into his spirit. Verse 19, now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, Amen. but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Amen. Man, we're family. Mm -hmm. Every believer, we're family, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. We're family. So let's quit fighting one another. That's right. Let's quit arguing over political views. Let's start agreeing with who we are in Christ Amen. and agree with the word of the Lord. He said, listen, you're no longer a foreigner. You're no longer a stranger. But now you are a citizen with the saints and members of the household of God. Yes. Then he says in verse 20, having been built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That's right. Remember, that was the cornerstone that the builder builders rejected. That's right. In verse 21, in whom the whole building being fitted together mm -hmm. grows into a holy temple in the Lord. That's right. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. spirit. So as believers, not only are we seated in heavenly places, not only have we been made alive, we're mm -hmm. no longer being led by our fleshly desires, but now we're seated in royal royalty. That's right. We're part of the body of Christ. He is the head, Jesus Christ. Right. So now we're part of citizenship in heaven. Mm -hmm. We're no longer, this world is fading away. Mm -hmm. We're just strangers and pilgrims walking through this land. That's right. Our citizenship is in heaven. It's eternal. That's right. That's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In mm -hmm. my Father's house are many mansions, and mm -hmm. if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I go, there you may be also. And so we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. God is building his house. Yes. God is building his body. There's always a remnant. Amen a remnant that, that is sold out to him. And, and that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. It takes men and women of God that are completely surrendered and completely sold out to the Lord to be a part of the body of Christ. It's one thing to know his word. It's another thing to be transformed and experience and live out his word. Amen. That's and right. that's what we must do. We must be transformed from the inside out, out, which the spirit of the Lord does in our life. But we have to apply the word of God, get in the word of God and take our position that's right. And be able to walk out what the Lord has given us because we've been deputized with the anointing, the authority of Almighty God. Yes, I like that. Deputized. So stop backing up. That's right. Stop cowering. Start doing all that God's called you to do. Why? Because there's a dwelling place, and it's you and me, that the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of us, and He wants to show off in the name of Jesus. Amen. You and Jesus always equal the majority. That's right. That's right. One plus Jesus equals a majority. That's right. Man, I hope you really enjoyed it this evening as we talked about um, Ephesians chapter two. As you can tell, we're, we're excited. Yeah. We get excited about the word of God. <laughs> we should, all of us should get excited about the word of God. Absolutely. It's just, it's, it's just awesome to understand where he's brought us from. Yeah. And he's not done with us. He's not no. done with you. Mm -mm. As we always say, the best is yet to come. That's right. And no matter what you may be going through this evening, be reminded where, you're, where you are positionally, mm -hmm. that you are seated in heavenly places, That's right. that what seems to be over your head, still under his feet. That's right. And if it's under his feet, it ought to be under your feet. Mm -hmm. We're praying for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for every need that is watching us. God, you know every situation, you know every family. Yes, you do. And I just ask right now, Father, I thank you, thank you 
that we have been made alive through the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we pray that you would touch every heart and touch every mind. Bring healing to those that are sick, those that are recovering from surgery. We speak speedy recoveries in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you praise and we give you glory for it. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, listen, don't forget this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. We would love to see you here live on our Encounter campus. God has just been moving in a, in a powerful way. Last Sunday morning during our worship, the Holy Spirit was just consumed this place. Yes, it did. People were, people's lives are, are, are being touched and can Amen. P- continue to be transformed. Even this week, we've heard of miracles and testimonies mm-hmm. of what God has, has been doing and what God did last Sunday. The, the previous Sunday, Easter Sunday, even before we took up the offering, we had, I think it was four people give their heart to the Lord, had an altar call even before Praise offering God. took place. I mean, this is what it's about. Yes, to God be the glory. God spoke a word to this house mm-hmm. And said that this would be the year of the local church. Yes. And we believe that. This is the year of divine favor, divine prosperity, divine breakthrough. And we believe that this is the year of the local church. We're praying for you. We believe in you. And remember, with God, all things are possible. So whatever you're facing, know that you're not going under. Mm -hmm. You're not defeated. But you're going over because you are victorious in Jesus name. Let me tell you something. God is not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. Yes. He keep is. believing, keep walking. And remember, we are encounter, encounter strong. strong. Be blessed in Jesus name. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to give into this ministry, there are three ways to give. You can stop by the church Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can mail it to 12240 Five Mile Road, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22407. Or you can give online at www.encountercog.com forward slash give. Once again, thank you for joining us.